Hello and welcome to the Giving Voice to Depression podcast, produced in partnership with the A.B. Corcor Foundation for Mental Health. I'm Terry, the creator and co-host of this podcast. I've lived with depression most of my life, and I know how easy it can be to feel all alone in the experience. I'm not alone, and you aren't either. And I'm Dr. Anita Sands, a licensed clinical psychologist and life coach with a number of my own diagnoses, all of which bring a certain amount of anxiety and depression along with them. There is great power in shared experiences. We share our own as we engage in intimate and candid conversations with our weekly guests, exploring different perspectives on and experiences with depression. We keep it real because depression is real. We keep it hopeful because there truly is hope in spite of what depression tells you. Hi, Terry. Hello, Anita. You know, there's a saying that goes like this. When you're happy, you enjoy the music. But when you're sad, you understand the lyrics. That saying came to mind as we put this episode together because we're going to be talking with a singer, songwriter, guitarist about the lyrics to his band's new song, Anything Can Happen. Our guest today is Matt Whedon, one of two brothers in The Tours, a three-piece harmonic indie band from Devon in the UK. And the moment we heard it, we wanted you to hear it. And what we suspect was a pretty good story behind it. So in the middle of the night, we wrote the band and asked if we were correct in thinking that the lyrics are about mental health conditions and depression in particular. Mm -hmm. The response was obviously a yes, and the contact information for their agent to set up this interview. So here is Matt Whedon of The Tours, giving his voice to depression. So I want to tell you how I came to reach out to you. Yeah. I also live with depression, and it was one of those wonderful sleepless nights and it was probably yeah. two thirty, three in the morning here and you know got to the point where what are you going to do except scroll and I saw you and your band members in one of the amazing spaces you decide to sing and I thought oh I'll bet that's really cool acoustics and oh. so I clicked on it and the phrase that came up was ironically um I know it isn't much but I slept through the night Okay. And I sort of chuckled, thinking, well, I'm not. Yeah. And then I opened the curtains. <laughs> so I'd hear the birds and get a taste of the light. I think I'm getting better. And I thought, I think this is about depression. <laughs> and so I wrote you, and you said, yeah, let's talk. So I was like, that's that's amazing. Oh, I love it. So tell me how how this song came to be. I think subconsciously, I hadn't really thought about the song. Like, I was, I wasn't intentionally trying to write a song about depression or something it was just a, an exercise for me it was getting it out of my mind and I mean you can sit down and try and write a song and we often do that but this this song in particular came just during a really hard time in my life and I, I think I just turned to music as a way to I don't know maybe express how I was feeling but also I think just as a distraction so I sort of had this line that I just kept singing over and over again. Um, I don't, are you allowed to swear on this podcast, by the way? You can do whatever you want. If I have to bleep it, I will bleep it. Well, but it's just the line that I had where the melody is the, you know, I know it's in her, but I got da, da, da. And all I kept singing again and again was like it really it really fucking hurts da, 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 da. like every line would start with it really fucking hurts to get out of bed to eat breakfast <laughs> go for it and it was just i just had this one line i kept singing and singing because at that time everything hurt like doing everything it was weird like even something i enjoy doing like going for a walk with my dogs like that that was sort of just so i don't know just felt numb everything felt everything hurt and everything was a bit numb just want to jump in here to point out how Matt describes what seems like a contradiction. The simultaneous experience of both pain and numbness with depression. Oh, and the physical weight of it, which you're going to hear described in the lyrics. People without depression might not understand those things, but we suspect most of you do. Here's the first verse of Anything Can Happen, which we're grateful to have gotten permission to use here. I know it shouldn't hurt 
to get out of bed The buttons on my shirt come undone Weigh me down like they're made out of lead I think I'm getting worse I don't remember happy And all I want to do is sleep Until I forget But even when I start to dream Every little piece of me gets a little closer Do you mind stepping through the lyrics if I read them and you'd sort of tell me yeah. what you were thinking? I know it shouldn't hurt to get out of bed. The buttons on my shirt come undone, weigh me down like they're made out of lead. I think I'm getting worse. This line killed me. I don't remember happy. And, and talk to me about that. That's the stage <laughs> you, you were reflecting back on, but obviously were out of when you wrote it. Yeah, it, it, it was just this place of, Every day, I just didn't want to do anything. I couldn't really eat. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't focus, which was very distracting for me because I'm a very driven per- person. I love, I love to wake up early. I love to exercise. I like to like achieve things. Like it helps me. But when when all this stuff happened, I just couldn't do anything. So it's like you know, I, even I got, I couldn't get out of bed. And then when I had to get dressed, go downstairs to have breakfast, I didn't want to put on clothes. I didn't. Everything felt almost itchy on my skin because I was just feeling crap. And it was like. And I just couldn't remember being happy. That was even like, you know, a week in of feeling that low. Everything was just so bad. And it was, it could, totally blows me away that your, I don't, I don't really, un, you know, your mind or your body can put you in that place. Yeah. Like, how, how do we do that to ourselves? How do we like get that sad? And it's, it's truly remarkable because I don't think you consciously do it. Something just happens. And, and it's, you know, that's why so many people suffer that it's not an easy thing that you can diagnose or explain or cure it's just like your body sort of shuts down well it was for me anyway personally um yeah and i just wanted i wanted like i said in this line after that is all i want to do is sleep until i forget and it's like i just wanted to sleep i just wanted the days i wanted to be you know the world a hole to open and eat me up and but i couldn't sleep because you've got so much in your mind or you just feel too sad and it's i don't know how you feel like when you're in a place like that and it's just you don't know how to do anything it's everything you know in life flips itself on its head and it's all reversed and you're like what do I do what did you do I took every day as it comes I tried to surround myself with good people I'm, I feel very fortunate with the sense that I have a really great best friend called Kieran who I love dearly and he would talk to me non-stop I mean he would call me up all the time I mean, we would talk for two, three, four hours a night wow. and he would wait on the phone until like maybe I was falling asleep or I couldn't even talk anymore because I was so tired just to be there. Obviously, a friend like that is rare. So we wanted to hear more because maybe we can learn how to be a better friend for someone who's struggling. Or we can send this episode to someone we wish would step up for us as an audio instruction manual of sorts, since subtlety is not an option when we need help. Either way, it's inspiring to hear what true support looks and feels like. Because when depression tells us repeatedly that no one cares, Matt's friend proves that some people truly do. Luckily, like I said, I had that friend who was constant for me, which I know a lot of people don't have. And so, you know, I feel so bad that some people don't have that. I think what he did so well is he would always give his opinion or talk about it but all he really did was listen and he would just sit on that phone and it's kind of just so lovely to know that you have somebody that you could do that with you don't even really have to talk but you just know that someone's there because when you I think for me when I was so inside my head and so depressed and I felt so alone it was just like does anybody care is there anyone out there that wants to hear about this because I often found each night I spoke to him I just repeat myself again and again and again and again and because it's in your head, isn't it? You go, what is wrong? Why am I like this? Why? Yeah, it's round and round in circles. And he would just listen every night. And I, I was so fortunate to have that. And I mean, I've had it since because I've gone back to that place a couple of times because of my actions, like because I struggle with other things like addictions and stuff. I'm very fortunate to have someone to listen to me. There's another saying that being heard and being loved are so similar that most people can't differentiate them. And someone 
anyone in a situation who feels loved, whether in depression or not, is going to feel better as a result. Being heard contributes to healing and wellness. If someone says, I'm going through something, I, n- I never react personally like, oh, you know, don't worry, it's going to get better. Just, you know, stick with it. You're going to be all right. And not that that isn't coming from a good place, but I think it almost, when you, you say that to someone, you're shutting them down a bit, but you're like, oh, don't worry, it gets better. It's all good. Crack on. It's like, well, you've immediately shut this person down who wants to open up. So, and, and some people don't want to talk, so I don't want to dive into it, but I'm just like, hey, let's talk about other stuff. Let's just chat. It's just having a conversation and, and distracting them for a bit. And then they start, I think you feel better when you realize you're human, you know, yeah. and you could talk about something in your day that isn't maybe your thoughts. So, yeah, it, thoughts got pretty dark and Doing probably well. a lot darker than I even put in the song. But, you know, it's maybe that's the part of me that was thinking commercially. I'm like, well, I can't get too dark because no one's going to want to listen to the song. But, but you know, I think I, I touch on it and, it, and, it, and I'm, I'm proud of what we've done with it. I, yeah, I would be too. And, and those of us who have been there know the dot, dot, dot. You know, yeah. We know what you left out, you yeah. know? Yeah. Let's talk about the rant. If you need a minute, take a minute. Like, it's all that you've got. Another hour doesn't matter if it helps you to stop counting the days that you've lost. Over and over. I just <laughs> feel that. Yeah. Oh, how did you come? What is, tell me the thought behind that. Then I should be having you read these, not me. Sorry. No, no. You read it really well. It's nice to hear it read instead of sung. <laughs> um, this is all thanks to my brother. I was going through this and took these things to him and he turned them into what you see here. And it was like, you know, I can't remember ever being happy. And he made that into a verse. And then I was just like, you know, sometimes you've got to take time for yourself. And he, he was like, well, look, you know, you, he would say to me, you just got to take a minute. Just let's take a minute. Let's just go for a walk. Let's talk. And he was just like, hang on. Like, let's, this is what we need to talk about. Cause if you need a minute, take a minute. And I think this applies to everyone. It's something that everyone is connecting with is to remember just to take some time in your day, even if you're not actually going through something, like if you're not feeling depressed or anxious or suffering with something mentally, it's still good just to take a minute. You know how I think we're all so obsessed with life is full on, right? We're striving to achieve greatness or whatever. Like we fill our, our days with sometimes meaningless stuff just to keep busy. We all love to be busy. I think social media has like encouraged us to, we think we have to be leading a life that is like, whoa, 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 everything's going great. But sometimes just take a minute, like even if you're just sitting down and having a cup of tea or you're watching a bit of like TV or you go for a walk or whatever it is, it's just to take that minute for you and not to give it to someone else. Like give yourself just a breather and just be like, oh, okay. And you know, for me, it was just at a time when I needed to stop counting those days over and over in my head. Like, why did I do that? Why am I here? What's going on? And it was just like, okay, let's just stop a second. And it's the second half of this chorus where it's like, no one said it's easy, but it's easy to forget what they say. No one said it's easy, but it's easy to forget what they say. Another hour doesn't matter if it helps you to take back all the days that you lost. Anything can happen if you want it enough. But it's very easy when you're suffering with depression to forget what they say. And like, if it's, it's what I was referring to earlier, when someone just says to you, oh, don't worry, I know it's hard, but it's going to get better. So it's like, so I forget those things people say, because it's almost like, I don't want to hear that. I almost want to hear the truth where it's like, well, you know what? This is really shit and it is really hard and it's not going to get better for a bit or a while. So let's talk about it. You're like, you know, t- yeah, another hour, it doesn't matter if it helps you to take back all the days that you lost. Just take some time for me everything comes back to time because it's like obviously the rarest commodity, the one thing we can't buy more of in this world of ours and the life we, we live, you know, it's, it's our best friend. It can sometimes feel like your worst enemy because the days are long <laughs> and the yes. nights are longer. Well, but And when you keep saying the, Hey, it'll get better. The people who haven't experienced it don't understand that when we're in it, we truly believe we will never feel better. This is how I am now. Yeah. This is how yeah. it is now. And that yeah. is a really hard place from which to grasp hope, you know, to hang on to, to find oh. it and then to hold on to it. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you find it? It's such a, I'd, I almost, I don't know. I'd, 
I couldn't tell you where I found it. It's just I created that routine. And I think that that gave me some comfort having a place and a, and a way of living each day, uh, of getting through each day, you could say. Like, you know, it just I had a purpose because I created myself a routine to wake up, to walk, to work, to try and eat some dinner, to watch a TV show that made me laugh every night. I got into, I can't remember what the series was called. It's an American show. I've totally forgotten, but I, I, you know, for example, I had an episode of that every night. I'd watch one or two of those and, and I'd be like, okay, like it would actually make me laugh. And I was like, this is good. I've laughed today. It was like a little uh, bucket list of every day. I'd tick off. Like, I've done these things and that helped me because how do you find hope when you feel that low? Like what, what gives you nothing? I don't think anything anyone can say or anything you read, like it, nothing is like, oh yes, yeah, they've done it. I can do it. Cause even if you know other people have gone through it, you're like, well, I haven't gone through it. I'm here. How do you get out? So I think you just have to keep moving. But that sounds, I mean, it's easier said than done, you know? So Terry, I love this song. I think it's beautiful and, and it's real. And the things that I love the most about it are the messages about keep moving on, hold on, you know, don't give up. Anything can happen. Um, and the other thing that I also really loved was was his emphasis on how powerful it was to be heard and accepted where he was, maybe gently nudged into being able to have conversations about things other than, you know, what, what, what he couldn't get out of his out of his head. But I think there's a whole lot of power in just acknowledging to people that it just sucks right now period. Like that is a complete sentence yep. and that we don't have to say it's going to get better. And, you know, all of those things, which again, you know, you forget, even if you hear them again, it may not even have an impact. Um, so just acknowledging sometimes that it really is bad right now. It just is. And it's probably going to be for a while. So just like he did, what can I do while I'm waiting for that anything to happen? You know, what What can I do to take care of myself? What are the things, the routines that I can get into? How can I weather this? Um, and I, I really like that that part of it. Anything can happen, you know, if you wait long enough and, and if you can be kind to yourself and compassionate to yourself as you're waiting. And so that's what I love about, you know, both the song and, and Matt's, yeah. Matt's being really open and honest about what it was like for him. Absolutely. And I do like that idea that, while we wait for the anything yes. that we have to do things you know there are there are steps we can take and that might be you know, it's definitely harder some days than mm -hmm. others it's, sometimes it's damn near impossible but when we can mm -hmm. to just say i am going to get out of bed i am going to shower um i am going to eat maybe i'm going to go outside maybe i'm mm -hmm. going to go to work whatever you know is allowable and then that facilitates the change, the anything that can happen. And and I'm not sure, certainly not in my experience and a lot of the people we've talked to, lying in bed, mm -hmm. is it laying in bed? I'm so bad with that. It's lying. Lying in bed is um, seldom a catalyst for change or mm -hmm. improvement mm -hmm. or healing or recovery or any of those words. So I, I really appreciated how actually we get into it also in the, in the next episode, but how specific he was about the value of a schedule and just making himself do something that could bring change. Including watching a funny show, right. an episode of a show right. every night. I love that he included that because I have so I have so many people who think that that's being lazy and self-indulgent and it's not going to help anything and they're wasting time. But if you can watch something that's familiar and funny and it just kind of puts you in a good mood or reminds you of better times, that's mm -hmm. powerful. That's really powerful. I remember laughing and thinking, oh, like it, it was almost uh, an unfamiliar sound, you know, to laugh out loud. And I thought, oh, well, good. It's still in there, you know. It's there's, still in there's there. There's some joy. Something can get exactly. to me. Exactly. <laughs> and, and I recently yeah. talked to yeah. somebody who's in a depression and, and he said, you know, I, I've got the TV on and it's just ridiculous. You know, it's like they're my friends because I can't interact with friends. And I said, was it something funny? And he said, yeah. And I laughed. And I said, that sounds like a good idea to me. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I think surrounding so, yourself with, you know, whether that's, you know, the, a virtual community or, you know, people might think it's it's strange to think of, you know, characters on a show or, you know, like I watch the Great British Baking Show and, you know, mm-hmm. you feel like you get to know these people and sure. you know, they're familiar. And I think that for a brain that is just really, really challenged, um, overstimulated or just kind of numb what is familiar as long as it's comforting and it's it's helpful and positive and non-shaming i think is very healthy and very good for our brains it's still input it's still stimulation but it's familiar it doesn't like take energy to have to to understand it or appreciate it and so for that reason i think it can be really again really powerful and how about Matt's friend? I was just going to ask you, what did you think about this friend? I love, I actually, it made, it inspired me to be a better support to some people I know who are struggling because if someone's having trouble, for instance, working, um, if I said, you know what, let's just put our phones on speaker and work together. Uh-huh. And, you know, if just hearing somebody there and feeling oh, less yeah. alone while you're trying to Body do what doubling. you do. It's wonderful. I've never heard that phrase. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's 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 really big in the autistic and ADHD community that you can you can get more done and be productive if you can do it with someone. So, oh. yeah, so people people will go online to YouTube and and they will clean with a person who's cleaning their home, you know, so that you're not alone doing it and you can watch what they're doing and it makes it easier for your brain to not have to think, "Oh yeah, how do you you know, wow. unload the dishwasher, which sounds maybe for someone who's not struggling ridiculous, but having somebody there doing it with you is always something that helps you to get going. So fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. I just loved that. I wanted that. So shout out to Matt's friend. Yes. I think Kieran was the name. So mm-hmm. uh, way, way to model being an awesome support. Yeah. That was really, really inspiring. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I, I wish everybody could have a Kieran in their lives. I know. I wish I had one. Absolutely. I wouldn't mind being one sometimes either. Yeah. Nice. So we will be back next week. We're going to play the second verse and talk more with Matt, including how the song has been received and what a surprise that was to the band. I can't wait for the second episode. I loved I loved the song so much. Thank you, Matt. We will be back with more of our discussion and your song next week. And thank you, Anita, as always. Thanks, Terry. We truly hope that our podcast brings a little more understanding, helps you better articulate and reflect on your own experience with depression, or better understand how to support someone else who is struggling. If this episode has been of comfort or value to you, know that there are hundreds of others like it in our archive, which you can easily find at our website, givingvoicetodepression.com. And remember, if you're struggling, speak up, even if it's hard. If someone else is struggling, take the time to listen 